Hey guys, today I'm going to go ahead and defend Jeremy as best as I can. And I'm not defending Jeremy, Jeremy, I'm defending Jeremy's argument that sexual offenders should not be allowed near children, sexual offenders should be banned from magic, and or judges, local game store owners, they should have a background check if they are going to interact with children. Now, I will defend him in saying that most of the attacks have not been on his argument. They have been on, so that's his argument. They've been on him personally, and that is called an ad hominem attack in the law. It is the first thing you learn in law school boot camp, which is always a good time, is an ad hominem attack is instead of attacking the arguments on the merits or on fact, you attack the person making the arguments. You would only use this tactic if you're, you had no facts, you had no merits, and you, had, you wanted the person making the argument to look bad. But that doesn't actually hold up in many cases because if something happened, if the, let's just make it very simple. Background checks should apply to Magic the Gathering judges because they may or may not interact with children. That's the argument that's being made from Jeremy. I don't know how you would refute that argument. Background checks are incredibly cheap. My company does background checks. It's really important for the employees to know other employees are you know, not criminals. It's really important for us to know as a company that if something, something happens, it's not we did everything we could do to prevent something, a disaster from happening, and we at least had the information beforehand. So instead of attacking this argument, which I think is a very solid argument, just spend the extra $30 online or $20 online to do a background check on store employees, on the game store owners, as well as the judges, uh, especially the judges because they tend to be teachers and people who may abuse their powers if the circumstances permit them to do so. So instead of attacking the argument, most of Jeremy's detractors, they attack the person. And it's very easy to attack Jeremy. Jeremy is not a nice person. He is sometimes very blunt, very mean, and he's not in it to make friends, which is, you, some people like that and some people don't. I think he could have been nicer to Christine. And again, I'm going to keep saying that because that is my opinion. That is my personal opinion and I'm allowed to have that as Christine and as Jeremy, and I will protect everyone's right to have opinions. Now, the other step that they're gonna do is, just like the first tweet we saw, they're gonna attack Jeremy's supporters. And they're gonna say, hey, you supporters just live in your parents' basements. You guys are losers. No one cares about you. You're not brave. Look at me, my face is out here. And that is also not relevant because that's attacking another ad hominem. It's a very secondary ad hominem attack that is even weaker than attacking Jeremy. I mean, in, uh, traditionally ad hominem attacks are one of the weakest arguments you can make because it's not even, you're trying to detract from the argument, right? The argument is should background checks for 20 to $30 be run on judges before they have events that could include children? That's the argument. That is the, that's what's being discussed. Now, if you cannot win that argument, you can try to, you can try to confuse people and think that the argument should be actually, is Jeremy a good person? Is Jeremy a good human being? And you present all this evidence that Jeremy is not a good human being, but you didn't really move forward your argument about the background checks. Now, a even one step removed. This is how I know that like some of these people, their logic is not correct. I will be honest, I don't spend much time thinking about my videos. Uh, if you've watched any of my finance videos, it's not, sometimes it's like, oh, this is the first time I've seen this card. Oh, good, I own a lot of these pirates, nice. But from now on, I'm going to try to use my marketing experience, my background. A lot of you want to know a little bit more about my background. It's pretty impressive. I. I People will always say I'm bragging, I'm bragging, but I'm not even bragging because I am I can list all the Google words I won. I can list all the patent stuff and it's incredible 
what I've been able to accomplish. So for someone to say I'm living in my parents, because I support Jeremy or I support Jeremy's argument, that's how I'm going to frame it. I do not support Jeremy fully. I support Jeremy's argument because I think it is a valid argument. Does not mean I live in my parents' basement, right? So instead of even attacking Jeremy, they're attacking Jeremy's supporters for not being as, quote, open about who they are or anything like that. And that's mind-boggling how illogical this discussion has become where we're so removed. I've never seen a case I've read. And when you go to law school, you read lots of cases. I went to a top 30 law school. You read lots and lots of cases. You're reading probably 10, 15 cases a day. And I've never heard a case. And there's some cases where they do make ad hominem attacks with very petty lawyers. But I've never heard a case where you attack the supporters of the person making the case. That is like next level ad hominem attacks, right? Jeremy's supporters all live in their mother's basements. Therefore, Jeremy's wrong and this argument sucks and we shouldn't have background checks on judges. And I'm a judge. I'm a level one judge, by the way. I just grimace and think that, wow, this is, uh, this is pretty terrible. The logic and the great part about this and the, the really great part about this is I'm going to refute a lot of the logic that you've been fed all this time. Like Wedge says TCG player, supporting TCG player is the same as supporting your local game stores because your local game store is part of TCG player. My argument is that's a, on the base, it seems like an okay argument, but when you dig a tiny bit deeper, it makes no sense. Would we say support eBay because some local game stores are on eBay? Would we say support Amazon because local game stores are on Amazon? No, because they're taking a percentage of it. TCG Player is a third party. They're not your local game store. They're taking a percentage for service, and it's a very good service. I don't want to take anything away from it. It's just that you don't need to make that argument. You don't need to make the argument that supporting TCG Player is the same as supporting your local game store. That is not a valid argument. Would your local game store rather you buy from them directly and not pay the 9 to 10% fees? Yes, they would much rather like that. So it could be, you could say the same thing. Oh, because my local game store is on PicoTrade, support PicoTrade. By supporting PicoTrade, you're supporting local game stores. Support eBay, support Amazon, support Craigslist. By supporting Craigslist, you're supporting local game stores who some of them post on Craigslist. Some of them post on eBay. Some of them post on Amazon. So a lot of what's been fed to you guys, like I've just been standing and just be like, oh, wow, this is really illogical. Uh, and you guys fell for it. Mm -hmm. But now I'm going to tell you the truth, right? I'm going to use... Many of you probably don't think I'm very intelligent, but I can tell you I have accomplished a lot in my life. Um, a lot of awards. I've won. I've spoken at huge, huge conferences, uh, including multi-level marketing, which Pico Trade is very similar to. And that's why I could quickly identify, hmm, this is not something I want to be involved in because the last time I was involved in something with multi-level marketing with one of my clients tangentially, the SCC came down and that was not a bunch of fun to deal with. Um, so I know what it looks like. I know what it looks like because I've spoken at multi-level marketing events on the legality of multi-level marketing and how it's very, very gray and how like you should be super careful and I'm probably not the one who wants to work with you. So find someone else, please. Uh, and that's Pico Trade in a nutshell, right? One of the one of the things that I find kind of appalling about Magic the Gathering in the community, the YouTube community in general, is I don't know if they're making these arguments because they don't like these ad hominem attacks are bad enough because that's not a that's not a logical attack. That's not a logical route to disprove that judges should have background checks. But for another level one judge in college to make the argument that Jeremy supporters live in a basement to do an ad hominem attack on the person making the argument supporters that's next level like that's next level i've never seen that before like that would just be like like I, i've never seen that in case law before and i went to a pretty good law school 
it, it, it just wouldn't make any sense. I, I can't explain to you how like it, illogical this is. That, okay, you have an argument. Argument A is being made by person B. Attack person B. When, and you go next level and you attack person B's supporters? <laughs> like C? Like, wow. That is, that is like a logical loop I can't even imagine connecting. But that's what these people are doing. They're just trying to make Jeremy look bad because if Jeremy looks bad, then the argument quote on a quote looks bad. But that's not true in any sense because there's no... The argument is solid. I support Jeremy's argument. I support Jeremy's right to have an argument. Do I think Jeremy is the best human being ever? No. But attacking Jeremy isn't going to take away from the argument he has presented. How Jeremy got to this argument was it revenge? Was it pettiness? It doesn't matter. It's the argument that matters. And the argument is very simple. Should judges who interact with children have background checks? The argument is not, should Jeremy, is Jeremy a bad person? And definitely the argument is not, is Jeremy's supporters living in their parents' basements? So ridiculous, like, Mm hmm jeez like oh like and this is not the worst argument i've heard arguments from wedge and tolarian that make absolutely no sense logically that when you compile it when you break it down to its core components you're like wait what did he just say i will break down can i have a dollar video in terms of marketing in terms of language in terms of how it's written and how well executed that video was that wasn't a video that someone made in a day. That wasn't a video someone made in two days. That was a well-edited, well-scripted, well-written piece of writing, a piece of marketing. I can see it for what it is, and then everyone else sees it as, oh, man, that, that's great. I mean, it's just marketing at the end of the day, right? Because if you ask what the objective of this video is, is the objective to educate the end user? No. Is the objective to provide value to the end user? No. Is the objective to pull on the heartstrings of the end user to get donations? You might say yes, but it's actually no. The objective is very simple. It's to get donations. So don't confuse those two. A lot of people confuse the two. They confuse the end result with how we got to the end result. In marketing, you don't really care about that. You only care about how much money was raised. If enough money was raised, it's a good video. If it wasn't, it was a bad video. That's the core component of marketing for that particular video. And it's so interesting to see and digest and break down. That's my big, that's what I want to show you guys because I have the experience. I run multi-million dollar companies and do a very good job with them. Uh, I, and we have some of our best months. I think the, for most of our companies, we had three, three or four of our best months that we've ever had historically. And they've been under my watch. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Leave me a comment below. Bye.